Hello and welcome to Spectrum. This interview is taken from our upcoming series on work and leisure, where we will be looking at gender roles and stereotypes right across society. This interviewee is Merrick Badger, a social justice activist and environmental campaigner. He currently works for the campaign opposing police surveillance. Here we are in conversation about the ethical concerns surrounding undercover police spying and his own experiences of being spied on by Mark Kennedy. We focus on the gendered aspect of this issue, as the vast majority of undercover police officers are men. Many of these began heteronormative relationships with female activists that they were spying on. Some were very serious relationships with planned children who were later abandoned. One such man was Bob Lambert. Lambert still lectures at St Andrews. <laughs> There's a lecturer at St Andrews called Bob Lambert who was an undercover police officer in the 1980s with a unit called the Special Demonstration Squad who were targeting political activists. Uh, basically if people are politically active in the uh, bit of, in the political spectrum outside of what's in the House of Commons they were targeted and they were undermined. So we're talking about um, anti-racist campaigns, animal rights campaigns, far left and far right groups, uh, trade unions and these people would live deep undercover and live as committed activists in groups. Lambert particularly targeted a group called London Greenpeace who had nothing to do with the big Greenpeace and he went in there he co-wrote a leaflet called what's wrong with mcdonald's mcdonald's then sued for libel this led to the longest trial in english legal history and the fact of lambert's involvement and of undercover police officers being involved was kept from the court uh, their methods were incredibly invasive um, lambert had four sexual relationships with women activists two of them long-term ones one of them he lived with her for three years and they had a child together a planned child that he knew he would abandon and she didn't find out the truth until she read in the Daily Mail uh, two years ago uh, the truth of who he was she had been left to bring up their child alone uh, after his deployment Lambert then went on to run the unit and he put spies into other political campaigns he was the overseer of a spy who was infiltrating Stephen Lawrence's family campaign and uh, other other officers deployed into black justice campaigns for people who had loved ones die at the hands of police or police had bungled investigations because they are in their own words institutionally racist and so his his methods that he developed in the field seemed to become the blueprint for the the 10 officers that were under his command in the in the 1990s what do you think in St Andrews we can do about Bob Lambert's presence here and why do you think his presence is still dangerous? Lambert is teaching now, Lambert is teaching his, his career now, he has two academic posts, he's here in St Andrews, he also has another one teaching criminology at London Metropolitan University. He's trading on what he calls his counter-terrorism experience and this is not counter-terrorism, this is, this is a counter-democratic remit that the, this unit had. Um, this man is not a role model for for people who are developing police and state strategy for how to deal with with political activism uh, this man is a case study in how wrong it can go and you said about him starting relationships with four women could you talk a bit more about the institutional sexism that was involved in these cases yeah, so the the relationships that these officers had uh, whilst undercover uh, since it's been exposed the police have said that this should never happen, it's grossly unprofessional, it's never acceptable in any circumstances, it's a failure of the deployment and of the management oversight um, and they said yeah it's really, it, it shouldn't have happened and yet of the 14 officers that we've uh, got details on, 13 of them had such relationships, most of them had long-term committed life partner things, they integrated into people's families um, and this is, of, of those uh, 12 out of the 13 were men all the ones who had long-term relationships were men and having heterosexual relationships 
this is institutional sexism. This is the most complete invasion of privacy that it is possible for the state to enact. And this is something that is wholly unnecessary. It's utterly devastating to these women, to their sense of trust. And it's, it's totally abusive. There is, and even if you believe that these people should be being spied on, there's no excuse for these relationships. Such relationships are simply illegal in Germany. And uh, there doesn't seem to be any problem there with Swedes or whatever dreadful terrorist things that they believe that animal rights activists or anti-racist campaigners might be committing were they not having these relationships. It's just something there that helps bolster the credibility of those officers. And it was a perk of the job, frankly. Um, it's institutional sexism. And the, the officers who did that should be held to account. And as an officer who did it, and then as a manager of a bunch of officers who did it, Bob Lambert is, is deeply, deeply culpable. Even if that hadn't happened, do you think there's any justification for the spying in the first place? No. Um, I think political, political groups like this are essential to a healthy democratic society, and yet they're there to be undermined by these units. Uh, they see any... They're not distinguishing between a threat to life and limb and just a threat to the established political order or a threat to corporate profit. They're treating them as if they're all the same thing. Our thanks go to Merrick for taking the time to be interviewed by Spectrum. Keep an eye out for our upcoming episodes on work and leisure to find out more details of this shocking case.